Yeah, hello. Uh, in this mind map discussion, we will be talking about contracts. Upon completion of this discussion, uh, you must be very clear about uh, the legal aspects of a contract and the different types of contracts and its impact on the suppliers as well as customers. Uh, so, all contracts are uh, as a formal agreement uh, between the customer and the supplier. It is they are legally binding, and all contract requirements must be met uh, because otherwise the other party can sue you. And changes must be in writing and formally controlled. Uh, so you cannot have uh, amendments to the contract by way of emails and stuff like that. And changes must be formally controlled once the contract is signed. So uh, there should be there should be a change management. It should fall under a change management procedure. So it cannot be very ad hoc. And during contracting, one key decision would be uh, to either to make it uh, uh, centralized versus decentralized, uh, because in some in a distributed project, sometimes we have to decide on. Sometimes we procure material centrally and then we distribute. Uh, sometimes we allow the different geographies to procure it locally or sometimes uh, it can be a combination of these two that means the high value items alone we procure centrally and the low value items uh, can be procured locally uh, and and that's how it works both has its own merits as well as demerits because if you have a centralized contracting department then the contracting personnel you recruit uh, have uh, they have a career path. That means you'll be able to attract more talent to work for uh, the contracting department. Whereas if it is decentralized contracting, the contracting personnel may be reporting into the project manager. And as discussed earlier, the project by itself is temporary. And at the end of the project, even the contracting personnel may be sitting on the bench. So in a decentralized contracting, the contracting person doesn't have a career path. So because of that, we may not be able to invite a lot of talent. And in centralized contracting, you'll be able to negotiate better with the suppliers, whereas in decentralized, sometimes you will lose that uh, leverage. In the centralized contracting, the contract personnel cater to multiple projects. So your project may not get the, the sole attention of that person, whereas in a decentralized contracting, that contracting personnel is committed full time, committed to your project. That means your pro your project will get top priority. So these are some of the pros and cons of uh, centralized contracting versus decentralized contracting. And at the same time, this is a major decision one has to take during uh, planning procurements. The procurement process, uh, when you really look at the procurement process, first uh, you have to go ahead with the make or buy decisions, and that is the procurement planning. Then you have to uh, think through the solicitation planning. How are you going to get the material? Is it by acquisition of a company, or is it by uh, assigning a memorandum of understanding, or uh, off-the-shelf products? So how are, you, how are you getting it, or will you publish it? Uh, through the paper or will it be uh, electronic media for requesting for for proposals so all those things uh, have to be decided that is solicitation planning that comes under solicitation planning then uh, solicitation once your uh, statement of work is ready then you request for proposals uh, from the prospective vendors there could be bidders meetings where you explain the scope of work to the people, uh, tender briefing meetings, all those things happen. So the solicitation happens. Primarily, you ask for request for it's primary request for proposal. Then you shortlist a group of uh, vendors and then you, you you shortlist them. Then you sign a contract and then you get into a contract closeout. So these are the the key steps uh, in procurement process procurement planning solicitation planning solicitation source selection contract administration and contract closer now let us look at the different types of contract 
So basically, there are four types of contracts. One is cost reimbursable, uh, time and material, uh, fixed price, and uh, then you have a purchase order. So these are the four uh, basic types of uh, contracts. Uh, under the cost reimbursable, you have uh, variations like uh, CPIF, uh, that is cost plus incentive fee. It uh, means, okay, now, sometimes when I travel overseas for conducting this training, it is cost plus, uh, cost plus fixed fee, CPFF, means uh, all my cost is met by the, by the buyer, and every day I'm given a fixed fee, that is cost plus fixed fee. So in a cost reimbursable contract, the seller will never make a loss, whereas the buyer can make a loss. That is a key thing. In all cost reimbursable contract, the seller will never make a loss, whereas the buyer can make a loss. Because sometimes my partners take me, uh, invite me for a training, and when I go there, uh, the last minute, because of last minute cancellation, only two or three persons may be sitting in front of me, but still I'll get my uh, fixed fee. Uh, where the, my, my, the immediate buyer, who is my partner, can be making a loss. So, whereas I will never make a loss because I'll get my fixed fee. And the corollary to that is like some training programs, I see 25 people sitting in front of me. Still, I get only that fixed fee. Uh, that is the other side of it. So, the key thing is, in all cost reimbursable contract, the cost risk is with the buyer, not with the seller. And the variants are cost plus fixed fee and cost plus incentive fee. That means if I complete the project on time, I get some incentive. If the customer feedback is good, I get some incentive. Then comes time and material. If I want resources immediately where I don't have time to recruit people uh, and if the requirements are very temporary. Now let's say I want 10 Java programmers for six months. The best thing would be time and material. I can get them very fast. I just pick up the phone and then talk to the manpower consultants. I get them immediately. That is time and material. Uh, then fixed price with incentive fee. Uh, on all fixed price contract, uh, the seller can make a loss, whereas the buyer's liability is limited to whatever is agreed in the contract. In all fixed price contract, the cost risk is with the seller because the seller can either make a profit or a loss. We are talking only about the cost risk, because the other risk would be higher for the buyer, because if I sign a fixed price contract with somebody, only when they deliver the material to me, I'll know how good it is or how bad it is. So the quality risk, schedule risk, all these things are uh, higher for me as a, as a buyer. Uh, uh, whereas uh, the seller has the maximum cost risk in a fixed price contract. And uh, the variance of fixed price are fixed price with incentive fee. That means if I deliver it ahead of schedule or on time or with quality, then I get some incentives. Fixed price, FP, yeah, fixed price with uh, price negotiation terms, FP, APA. Uh, that is, uh, for running contracts, uh, which, which uh, the duration of the project itself is very high. Sometimes we will inbuilt uh, clauses for renegotiation of the price based on fluctuations in the market. That is FPEPA, fixed price with economic price adjustment. Uh, fixed price we already discussed. Uh, then the, the CPA of cost plus... Uh, award fee. Sometimes uh, the, the, buy, the buyer gives some advance to the uh, seller, that is cost plus award fee and cost plus percentage of cost. Sometimes, it's primarily architects and all. Once you do, uh, uh, the architect gets maybe two to three percentage of the project cost. Uh, so some, some countries it is banned because the incentive for uh, the cost plus uh, CPPC, uh, cost plus percentage of cost, uh, the incentive for the seller will be to increase the project cost so that he can make more money.
from the customer. So this doesn't protect the interest of the customer. So in some countries, it is illegal. So we spoke about uh, what is a contract. We spoke about centralized versus decentralized contracting. Then we spoke about different steps of uh, contracting. And then we spoke about different contract types. So this is very important. Uh, as a project manager, you must understand this. And for the PMP exam as well, you get around 15 questions revolving around these things. Thank you.